In this final section of our course, we're going to discuss how to put new skills and techniques into practice. In this lesson, we'll talk about ways to resolve conflicts within teams and how to manage conflicts between managers and employees, all in the hopes of fostering a healthy feedback culture. Team conflicts may arise from various sources. Miscommunication or misunderstanding, disagreements over roles and responsibilities, competing goals or priorities, or differences in work styles and personalities. Think back to your own experience working within a team. Maybe it's at work, maybe it's a team project at school. These issues, the inability to communicate well, conflicts over who should do what, and especially clashing personalities, they're common problems within teams, but they're not insurmountable. If you can recognize these conflict situations early, you'll be able to address them effectively. To manage conflicts within teams, consider the following techniques. Encourage open communication. And if this sounds like a common technique for many conflicts, that's because it almost always helps. Create an environment where team members feel comfortable expressing their thoughts and feelings and concerns. Sometimes all it takes is for people to know that they are being heard to begin to trust the others around them. Clarify roles and expectations. Ensure that each team member understands their role and responsibilities within the team. And if you need to work together to define those roles, even better. Because the next technique is to promote collaboration. Encourage team members to work together to share ideas and find mutually beneficial solutions. But if problems do arise, address conflicts early. Address them as soon as they come up to prevent them from escalating. Now switching gears, conflicts between managers and employees can be particularly challenging due to the power dynamics. It's a different kind of relationship than the one colleagues at the same level have. However, you can absolutely work through a conflict like this, no matter what side you might be on. Once again, open communication is key. Encourage honest and respectful dialogue between managers and employees. There needs to be opportunities for people to speak their mind in a respectful way. So whether that means creating informal meetings or structured reviews, something needs to be in place for communication to happen regularly to help avoid these conflicts in the first place. Focus on the issue, not the person. Discuss the specific problem or behavior. Avoid personal attacks or blame. Be empathetic and understanding. Acknowledge each other's feelings and perspectives. And try to find common ground. And seek feedback and be open to change. Both managers and employees should be willing to take that feedback and adapt their behavior if necessary. So whether you are the manager or employee, it's essential you focus on the issues and try to see the other side's perspective. Perhaps an employee is upset they aren't getting enough time to complete tasks. As a manager, you may have the opportunity to implement a new process or change an existing one, and you could both benefit greatly from working through the conflict. But as we've mentioned many times before, open communication is often the first step to working through conflicts and even avoiding them altogether. Fostering a healthy feedback culture within your organization can help prevent conflicts and improve overall work relationships. We started to mention this earlier, but you can encourage regular feedback through performance reviews, team meetings, and informal discussions. Ensure that feedback is constructive, specific, and focused on behavior rather than any personal attributes. With a culture of healthy feedback, conflicts between teammates and between managers and employees should become easier to work through and less frequent. In our next lesson, we'll discuss strategies for resolving conflicts in remote and virtual work environments. See you then.